Hello, the subject and details we will kiss in this video. What is mobbing? Environment that creates mobbing. Who is the purpose of mobbing? What bullies do? What you can do about mobbing? Effects of mobbing. What is mobbing? In very simple terms, mobbing is emotional abuse committed by a group on a targeted individual. I mean, this is nothing new. It happens at home, it happens at school and, of course, it happens at work. A group of people decide to team up and bully, harass and intimidate one person that they are jealous of or who they consider weak and vulnerable. The term itself has been mostly applied to emotional abuse in the workplace that is not related to racial or sexual harassment. It refers to the use of rumor, intimidation, innuendo, humiliation, discrediting and isolation to force someone out of their job. It can be used by the boss, co-workers or subordinates. In the research on this subject, it has been noted that the abuse occurs over an explorer. The environment that creates mobbing. I guess this is where I get personal. I have been subjected to mobbing and I know the environment that produces it. However, my experience is backed up by others and research. I would break it down to three elements that create an environment in which mobbing takes place. 1. Competition is encouraged. People in this environment are encouraged to compete and go against each other. Naturally, this creates a hostile environment and inspires people's unfortunate aggressive tendencies. 2. Divisions are emphasized. At the job where I was harassed ruthlessly, the boss herself used to emphasize differences between men and women. She'd even make derogatory statements about men. There was definitely a hostile environment there at the job. A group of us were well aware of it, that we, as a group, had been singled out for discrimination and harassment. This is fertile ground for abuse and hate. 3. The job itself is made difficult. In other words, Everyone is under extraordinary stress. This is because the management is inept and lays a lot of work on their employees. It creates an atmosphere in which everyone are at each other's throats. Who is the target of mobbing? You are shy, sensitive, considered weak and vulnerable, isolated with no friends. It might also be the case that you are very competent and skilled. The bully does not like to attack those who are formidable or who have allies. Bullies are cowards, I think we all know that by now. When they sense weakness, and because of their own weakness or jealousy, they choose to attack you as an easy target. What do the bullies do? Suddenly you are the subject of scrutiny. Your every action is questioned and your co-workers are telling you, unnecessarily, how to do your job. They are critical and not even slightly respectful about it. You get sneers and the silent treatment. You can't enter the room without weird looks or total silence. It's not your imagination, it's a concerted effort to make you feel alienated, alone and unwelcome. To top it off, your workload is unusually heavy and difficult. Even the boss likes to make your life particularly difficult. Others take credit for what you do, and no one acknowledges what you do. Files are missing from your work folder. Things you've scheduled somehow got unscheduled. You think you've lost your mind. It's called gaslighting. And it's related to gang stalking and other forms of abuse that occur in groups. They openly imply things about you. They have spread rumors that discredit you. Your work suffers, you suffer and you start calling in sick because you can't bear to face another day at work. What they are doing to you is working. 
You are about ready to quit altogether. What can you do about mobbing? It should be understood that in all likelihood, the bullies will make it look like you are the problem. That it's all about how you can't get along, how you are incompetent, or that there is just some personality conflict. Of course they do that. They are liars. So, your options are limited. Especially here in the US which is way behind Europe and Canada in dealing with workplace bullying, both in terms of legislation and research. In the US it is illegal to harass someone sexually or racially, but there is no law against good old homespun ordinary, but no less psychologically violent, mental abuse. So, I offer a few possible answers to the problem that might be within your reach. 1. Get an ally. As stated, the cowardly bully doesn't like to face someone who is formidable. One way to be formidable against mobbing is to fight fire with fire, get your own allies. This might or might not be possible. You have to be aware of true friends or even someone going through the same thing you are. You might get lucky and find an old friend has gotten a job at the same place. In some situations, you can actually go to the boss about it. This of course depends on the boss and policy. 2. Call them on it. This can work. Many people into mobbing don't like to be found out. They are always hiding and using tricks. They use their group for backup. They use rumor, they use sour faces. Exposing them can be effective. I have done it and I've seen others do it. Sometimes it takes very little effort. Someone gives you the sneer, you just say, well, that's real nice. I've seen people change their tune from something as simple as that. Even the slightest bit of assertiveness can make them back down. If you confront the ringleader, even better. 3. Legal help. Like I said, legal help in this area is limited. But if there are any hints of racial or sexual discrimination or harassment, you might have legal options. It also causes health issues. This one is a stretch. Our law in the US doesn't yet recognize hostile work environments as a health risk even though it is. However, if you take time off due to stress, and you have medical proof, the boss might not like having to pay out some workers compensation. Maybe they'll do something about the problem then. 4. Ultimately, you can quit. It might be the only solution, for the sake of your physical and mental health. Ask yourself if you want to work in an environment in which people have no regard for human beings. You can do better than that. Just make sure in the exit interview you tell them why you quit. So it's documented. In line with that, you should keep record of the abuse, for any future legal action you want to take. Keep notes on dates and times you were abused. It could come in handy if there is cause for wrongful termination or you might decide to file suit against the company. Effects of mobbing It is important to realize that this problem is a societal one. If you were bullied at home and bullied at school, it is likely you will be bullied at work. Unfortunately, bullies gravitate toward those who seem to be a victim. All the more reason for you to not be a victim, specifically, not their victim. This problem reaches into all aspects of life. Bullies won't let you be safe anywhere, they even catch you while out in public with the current popularity of the knockout game. And they make everything more difficult. At work, they are giving you an ulcer and high blood pressure, you are forced to call in sick. This should be enough to, finally, cause the boss some concern. After all, if you're lucky, 
they have to pay you sick leave when you're home dealing with acid in your stomach lining or your compromised immune system that has been broken down by months or years of emotional abuse. So, the effects are far-reaching, physically, emotionally and financially. It costs the boss with higher turnover, paying employees that don't stay or are out sick, having to retrain new employees that replace you. Of course, your own career could now be sabotaged and you could be out of a job permanently or for a very long time. Mostly, we have to make aggression, division and competition unacceptable. These are the things that generate bullying and abuse. The workplace is just one branch of the tree. We'd be better off cutting out the roots. <laughs>